live life so that you create good vibes. The good vibes. Live life so that you radiate good vibes. The good vibes. Live life so that you generate good vibes. The good vibes. Live life so as to emanate good vibes. The good vibes. Spread the message of your life with good vibes. With good vibes. With good vibes. Welcome to the Good Vibes Podcast. Hey, my friends, and welcome back to the Good Vibes Podcast. We are in the house with Ines Barros, and today we're going to talk about reflections on how her college has gone. If you don't know Ines, she's a part of Shrishti Institute of Art, Design and Technology. We are in Bangalore and she's just completed four years of her undergraduate program. Uh, and she's she's uh, her major was experimental media arts and she was the only person from her whole batch to be taking, to be graduating under that uh, major which is also why she faced a lot of difficulty in submitting her product uh, her projects because they were a totally different category and they didn't fit under the n- usual norms of a design college now Ines is going back to Goa today her hometown and uh, I wanted her to come and speak to all of you about how the entire experience of college was for her or her reflections on college, on how things were, how she dealt with the difficult times, how she coped up with the stress, how she took things with the stride of... Uh, with the stride of... Uh, it took, took things... Stride. Yeah, with in her stride. She took, took things in her stride. And looked at things in an optimistic spirit. She is also, by the way, a musician. And I keep telling this to all my friends because I am totally awed by this fact. She's completed all seven years of Royal School of Music, London. She's completed all the seven degrees or all the seven levels. Yeah, there are eight. She's completed seven. And uh, she wanted to join the... Which orchestra was that? orchestra yeah i guess it is an orchestra it's um it's a really large um uh, choir it's called the mormon tabernacle choir the mormon tabernacle choir and uh, she wants to do she wants to pursue a career in music sometime in the future but right now she's experimenting and she's thinking about the various choices that she's got so let's hand over the mic to Inez and I'll start with this question Inez how are you feeling right now well right now I'm feeling like um, at a threshold mm-hmm. and that commonly means that there are a lot of like mixed feelings bittersweet feelings about um, leaving an entire lifestyle behind <clears throat> like life in SFS and also like the Self finance society, which yeah. is where we Srishti kids reside, yeah. and um, also the excitement of uh, starting over, like like having a fresh start after graduation, mm-hmm. and um, also uh, like a sort of a at a crossroads kind of a thing, okay. because I have to decide where I have to go from now. Okay. So, uh, you are you find yourself in a position of thinking, like yes. you're thinking what you're going to do. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, the next question is, how has college been for you? Like, you were saying you have mixed feelings about, like it's bittersweet, of course, there are good memories, there are bad memories, there's a lot of drama, 
at the same time there's a lot of friendship and i mean some things just go good you because you're in a college where you're getting to do what you want to do the projects are uh of your own self interest and in a way it's very very liberal and liberating for yourself if you compare yourself with any other college around the world around india you're really getting to express yourself and that's the one of the greatest freedoms you can get at this time yeah so how did you use that how did you utilize that freedom um well i would say well first of all what you said about the bitter sweet bitter sweet feelings at the end of it all the drama and the hardships that a normal student goes through well the drama and the hardships that you spoke about kind of become like you know just a separate part just something that happens along the way but you know it it happens i learn from it done dusted over but what i have right now that really sticks is um uh like uh, the the way my thinking or the way my holistic growth has blossomed mm-hmm. over these past 4 years mm-hmm. which is what something which is i think what something shrishti promises mm-hmm. and um what i like the most about this place is uh, their idea of uh facilitators mm-hmm. because um i don't think you can like of course their mentors their teachers etc but i really think they function as people who facilitate you to do something in the sense they don't give you all the answers you're not spoon fed but they guide you and they push you to find the answers yourself mm-hmm. be it like in anything with regards to work or anything that you might be encountering and uh, that's what i like in in shrishti mainly is that i've had a lot of holistic growth <laughs> um as for my work and the projects uh like you spoke about that freedom right yeah. um well it's it's kind of like freedom freedom within a framework mm-hmm. uh so i would say like above all more than anything uh shishti has given me freedom in a way that i can think for myself and i and i think that it has really taught me to think for myself mm-hmm. and uh not just you know about uh, how to work or about deadlines or about skill you know that comes with it anyway mm-hmm. but um what i'm really appreciative is of the fact that it has taught me how to think for myself Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. My next question is if you got a choice to relive Shrishti would you choose the way of drama because at the end of it like you learn a lot or would you go with the path of no drama that's fine. I mean what do you think? I mean even un un uh, I mean inevitably the drama seeps in and you learn from it but should should how what have you learned through your experience mm-hmm. to view it now like you said it's become a small part when you look back but when you're in it it is like the whole thing it's yeah. it just occupies your whole mind yeah. so if you go through something like that again maybe when you're in work maybe when you're doing some other project of yours how are you going to view the same drama differently uh well in my case at least personally speaking um drama really hasn't been much of a focus mm-hmm. to my life here but if you want my views on it i can give it mm-hmm. give you how i feel about it is that um like you said you asked me how different it would be if i face similar dramas in the workplace mm-hmm. well honestly speaking um i have not faced um, like you know recurring drama mm-hmm. it's it's just like yeah it's one hurdle and then you get past it mm-hmm. and then if it happens again you know you're way around it so yeah, yeah. i don't really okay and and kind of the same way. problem uh, okay. again mm-hmm. it's it's just uh there's no separation i i feel like there's no difference in the way um 
there's no sort of difference in drama when it comes to people in college and in the workspace of course i'm yet to get into the workspace mm-hmm. so um i think it's just a personal journey that's undivided when you when it comes to drama this it's not uh, it's not like drama it's not like there is college type drama and there is workplace drama okay. uh i feel like the way you deal with drama is what is different and is different each time mm-hmm. and uh, maybe considering it something is temporary and not giving it its full attention helps does it uh well you do need to understand the problem first mm-hmm. of course that's how um, that's what i learned to do okay. and uh well i don't think we can say that we we can't give it attention because <laughs> okay it, fine <laughs> because it demands our attention so valid, valid enough yeah. so yeah you give it its due attention mm-hmm. and then move past then move past cool now i heard like when you were submitting your project your final project and you had to go through three juries and every time you went through a jury you got some different feedback what well, what was i mean something like that happened i don't know the full story of course but at a point it came at some point you had lost hope in your project you had lost faith in your project did something like that happen uh well it tends to happen in most cases when mm-hmm. students are stuck with a project one thing to focus on for four months mm-hmm. so it's difficult to uh, sort of you know just uh ideas your ideas change along the way because you feel like you don't you there's not not much that you can distribute over this span of time so that is what was challenging i suppose mm-hmm. uh but then my idea my main idea did not change just the way i executed changed a lot okay and how did you pull yourself out of those times where you just wanted to quit i never wanted to quit because okay. uh, because what i had in mind i was really determined and hell bent on executing it mm-hmm. i didn't have any sort of fixed notion about the form it would take but my idea was i i sort of wanted to make um, music understandable to everyone mm. without uh, having re- without requiring them to know the uh you know the terminologies or the language of music mm-hmm. because uh i think it's i believe it's something that is rooted in nature mm-hmm. so that's what i wanted to execute and that's what i wanted to put forth and i was just um focused on that and i was not too focused on the form of which this idea would take okay and what did you do when the faculty you showed it to didn't approve of it how did you receive that feedback and how did you move past it see that's what i said about faculty um uh they don't they don't never they don't not approve of things mm-hmm. and it didn't happen to me either mm-hmm. okay <laughs> uh but uh, they did say like you know we had user testing and they did say that some elements of your work might not generate the response you expected it to so see how you can change it around mm-hmm. you know that's the kind of feedback i got and uh yeah no one's ever going to tell you that or they might but it's it's not something to be taken um yeah no one's going to no one can actually say that hey this is not going to work yeah you know you have to you know you have a solid idea and you just have to find another way to make it work Mm-hmm. that's all and they they know how to hint that to you that you know you can make this work in another way okay okay so we've discussed a lot we've talked about uh her reflections of college very briefly but we've covered about we've covered how she she said that uh even though you may go through tough times you may go through dips uh highs and lows you may go through drama you may face rejection you may face any sort of thing it's just like a hurdle and you may face it once you pass it you may face it the second time you know how to move around it that was great 
and then she told us how her final project went about and how she was actually pretty passionate about completing the whole thing because it was her own idea so my suggestion to you would always be do something that you love because despite everything you're still going to try to do it rather than doing something for someone because the motivation for that will be only the other person's approval so do something you love and uh i think my last question would be your thoughts on uh confusion or thinking and how your ideas keep changing in a space like shrishti or wherever you are means if you're rigid with your ideas then you're really hitting a wall somewhere in the future but there's what but, but when you're not rigid then you face this confusion you face like so many ideas and then your ideas start changing then your thoughts start drifting how do you use that as a tool confusion as a tool um i think it's i would say it's a good sign if you have confusion it means you're you can think of more than one thing and you're not just on a you're not kind of but well, you don't really have a one track mind mm-hmm. and i think that's a good thing mm-hmm. because we're all creative and at the end of the day we think of like 10 million things okay so um yeah i would say that when these dilemmas or conflicting I- ideas come about um you have like say for example you have like three different paths of you of how you can go about things like i would say that each of those paths or ideas would have something in common and that's a, that's something you can work on mm-hmm. so you should focus on that and um find the commonalities focus on that try and execute those commonalities in however as many ways as you can i so mean i don't think you'd have anything to, to have lose confusion uh yeah you can call it confusion sometimes it's sometimes uh you could also be referring to confusion in terms of like an artist block mm-hmm. which i think now that i think about it a lot of times uh artist block is like when you have an idea but you're too afraid you can't execute it so mm-hmm. you just stop and say i have okay. a block and i can't do anything uh-huh. like i sometimes it's that sometimes it's just you simply can't think of anything okay. so yeah Cool, cool. So we just covered confusion as a tool and how having 10 million ideas is actually a good thing in the sense you have diversity in your thoughts and you're flexible enough to change your roots to maybe get the same thing or maybe try something new your mind is opening up in a certain way Great Ines it was really lovely speaking with you this is uh this was a great podcast and inez uh, is into uh, she plays the piano very well i told you this before she's a pianist and so we're going to have your jingle feature for this itune episode in the start of the itune episode so whenever this itune episode is launching i'm going to be telling inez in advance to prepare a jingle for this episode and you can then follow her uh, on soundcloud are you on soundcloud yes on soundcloud i'll paste the links down in the description and uh youtube instagram instagram, instagram and instagram so that's it that's it with that that was the podcast with inez i really enjoyed it thank you so much inez for taking out your time to come for this podcast it's a pleasure yes and We hope to record another podcast maybe when I go to Goa and meet her there. See you until next time. Hey my friends, did you enjoy this podcast? If you did, do rate, review and subscribe to it on iTunes or whichever app or application you are using. And if you feel someone in your life needs to hear this message, don't think twice about sharing it. Or if you feel This inspires you to record one of your own podcasts. Go ahead and spread the good vibes. Spread the message.
of your life with good wives with good